Hello friends, my name is Kyle, Real Revelations Everywhere. In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of the decisions you make, decision making, and the power of good decision making. And believe it or not, it's a pretty powerful thing to make good decisions. I know, crazy, right? But there's a lot, obviously, that goes into making good decisions and figuring out what a good decision even is in the first place, obviously. That's, you know, the million dollar question. What's a good decision? How do I make it? And obviously, your situation is very different. I keep saying that. So your decision to be made amongst all else. I keep saying that too. We keep saying a few more things real quick, cover my bases real fast before we get into it, that uh, decisions made with a grateful mindset are going to, in general, be better decisions. They're going to work better for you and the people around you when they are being made with a deep appreciation for everything that you have and everything that you don't have and all the people that you know and all of that good stuff. And if you don't know why you should be grateful, I've spoken about it a few times. But in general, I think uh, most people, I'll say, at least have something to be grateful for. It kind of feels like I'm running through all this real quick just to get to the meat of what this video is. But if you haven't heard me talk about all of this stuff, I have a bunch of videos that are longer than not. And it's just running over all the important stuff as far as just having good intentions, grateful intentions that keep as many other people in mind as possible to make your decisions work the best for the most amount of people that you can manage at any given moment. And it's a lot more than you realize until you start making more impactful decisions, it's not easy to realize how impactful your decisions are. And all of this might seem very obvious to some people, but I think all of this really, really bears a lot of fruit. This kind of conversation is a, kind of, it's a conversation to be had over and over and over. There's no lack of repeating the effectiveness of good decisions and how you build on top of good decisions with more good decisions and in the exact same way how you build bad decisions on more bad decisions and you come up with a house of cards or a concrete foundation that you can put a skyscraper on and it's, you know, from the start of the day all the way through. The end of this day will lead directly into the next day. And your base decisions that you really aren't even making on a daily basis because it's become so conscious has to be reevaluated. You got to be wondering how well you're doing from the moment your feet touch the ground, once you get out of bed, to the moment they come back up, once you lay down, and everything that you do in between, whether it's just sleeping, how much time you spend on your phone, how much time you spend outside, how much time you spend exercising, how much time you spend working, what work you deem necessary, and what can be put to the wayside. That's another decision. All of these subconscious things add up to all of these small decisions that you haven't actually made in quite a while. You made them a long time ago and you figure, okay, well, you know, this is fine. This is good enough. Or, you know, this isn't the worst thing ever if I do it this way. So I'm just going to keep doing it this way. And then it just that thought is just in the wind, and it's just something that is just the way that you do things now. 
and all of these small decisions that don't have any real place in your conscious thought that it's all just subconscious that you kind of just glaze over that's just it just happens subconsciously and all of that has to be reevaluated in determining whether or not it serves you know the real purpose or is it just something that is just makes you you know your base desires feel fulfilled for the moment which is probably not serving you well if it's something like that like when i worked in construction something that we would always do as soon as we leave the shop we got all our gear we got all our tools we're good to go we're ready we're gonna hit the road obviously if we're gonna get somewhere in a car it needs gas so then every time we go get gas all of us are going inside and getting a bunch of stuff now looking back on those decisions it makes my skin crawl because all i was doing was eating fucking garbage and drinking fucking garbage that i'm getting from whatever fucking gas station they're all this fucking same it's all shit and i'm like i'm just shoving garbage into myself at literally like first thing 6 30 in the morning mouthful of garbage no fucking way like if i tried to do that now i would literally throw up <laughs> I'm not joking. If I tried to eat what I used to eat at 6.30 in the morning now, I would literally throw up. Just out of fucking respect for myself, first of all. It's, I can't do that. My eating schedule is completely different. My sleep schedule is completely different. The way that I operate is completely different. And it's not like, oh, well, I needed more energy early in the morning. And like, no, if I went straight back into construction, I still, I couldn't, I would never do that again. Like, it's a waste of money, waste of food, it's a waste of shit. It's just shitty energy that fucks you up for the rest of the day. It doesn't serve you well. It just made me feel full when I was sad. That's what that, that was the crux of that decision making was. I'm not happy. I'm going to eat. This is the garbage that's in front of me. Good enough. I'm eating it. There's no real conscious thought put into that. It's disgusting. And it's like, then I just sit in a car for another hour and a half after having inhaled that garbage for no reason. Shitty fleeting energy that doesn't serve me throughout the day makes me feel worse throughout the day. Then I get to sight. I'm even more tired than I was before because I all that garbage that I just ate actually cost me more than I got out of it. Believe, yeah, whoa, real shocker. And then I'm just suffering throughout the rest of the day from decisions that I made immediately. And these are all decisions that are rolling over from the night before and the day before and the night before that and the day before that and it's just compounds over and over well i fucking ate it yesterday so like i just oh, if i just eat again maybe i so well if i just do this well no if i just like all of these decisions it just becomes a part of who you are after a while if you don't if you aren't severely aware of it if you are not like actually grateful for the things that you're doing for yourself you are suffering from those decisions straight up that's what it is it's suffering at that point you and it's at your own hand once again for no reason no good reason you don't have any good reasons to be eating that trash there's so many decisions that you are already making that are preventing you from making actively better decisions for your own sake. And if you don't realize it first, then it's, you're only ever going to be resolving the symptoms and not the actual issue. And that's like all the fucking different, you know, drugs that you can take, not like hard drugs, but also that is very much involved, but like, 
over-the-counter stuff. Taking fucking aspirin and Advil and all this trash. That shit is so bad for you. It needs, like, those kinds of decisions. Taking something that's just, like, at the drop of a hat. I'm just gonna, you know what? I just want to get rid of it. I don't want to feel that way anymore. I'm just gonna... That shit is so bad for you. All these small decisions that are being made. Where you get your food from. Where you actually, like not even just live, but like how you interact with where you live. And there's like so many different variables, obviously, which is why you have to critically think for yourself and determine whether or not all of these things are good for you in your situation. Because not one person is going to have a list of 10 fucking steps. Well, this is how you actually fix all of this. Step number one, get a good night's sleep. Step number two, only eat healthy meals. Step number three, like, that shit doesn't fucking mean anything. It's your situation. It's your life. You have to determine what is good for you. But I'll tell you right fucking now, if you're eating a bunch of fast food and drinking a bunch of fucking soda and not ever exercising, and the only way that you get around is when you sit in a fucking car or you, you're walking, all of your walking is done from your car across the parking lot into whatever so and then you get to stand in the store for a little while maybe you walk around the grocery store for an, uh, 10 minutes like that cannot be all of your exercise that cannot be everything that you eat is just fucking garbage that you got from the window of a fucking building that you never got out of your car for that shit is so fucking bad for you that's not real food and you are filling yourself with not real shit it's garbage 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 and it's all of these small decisions decisions like where you get your food from really 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 affect how good you feel and whether or not you are willing to even be physically capable in the first place in general when you only eat shit you're only gonna feel like shit and you're never gonna feel like you're actually capable of so don't eat a bunch of shit if you don't want to be a pile of shit. All right, crazy. Whoa, don't be full of shit if you don't want to be full of shit. Wow. Never know, right? Fucking. I think that's an Einstein quote. You know, it would take someone like that of that l level of genius to figure out if you don't want to be full of shit, then don't put a bunch of shit inside yourself, right? Wow. I know it's like I think that's something that they teach in quantum physics very scientific terms don't be full of shit but it is that simple believe it or not and if you don't want to be full of shit one of the best ways to do it is to think like you aren't full of shit be grateful for who you are and what you have and when you're grateful for who you are and what you have, you don't want to do that shit to yourself. I have literally zero desire to drink soda. I have no desire to go to a fast food, no, it's not restaurant, a fast food garbage dispensary. Like, I used to, and that, that's coming, I, don't, I haven't outlined this yet. This is coming from someone that was very much addicted to fast food that's how i weighed as much as i did because that was what i did that was a enormous part of my day was when am i going to eat first second third fourth all the little ones in between like where am i going what am i eating when am i gonna eat it why don't know how many this and that how like just Food, 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 food for no reason. Didn't need it. Didn't actually even want it either, except for the hooks in my brain telling me that I need it. Like, just remembering, I still, like, remember the feeling of, like, yo, I want to go to fucking this. I want to go here. I want a fucking burger. And I want some, I want this burger. And I want a chicken sandwich, and I want these fries, and I want the no. I can't even, like, I don't think that I could convince myself to eat fast food now. 
Like, seriously, I actually thought about it the other day. I was like, man, I could go for a burger. And the first thing I thought about was the closest fast food place to me. And that next thought instantaneously was like, oh, shit, that sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds so shitty. That sounds disgusting. That sounds terrible. And then the next thought that I had was how bad I am going to feel as soon as I am done eating that stuff, how upset with myself I would be, how gross my body would feel, how shitty I would feel the next day getting rid of it, that sludge coming out of you. It's disgusting. Like, that's invert. Like, just take your, like, cravings and ideas and over time, you do have the ability to just invert it. And like you use the memory of those feelings and you associate it with something so fucking disgusting and vile, which is actually just seeing it for what it actually is in the first place. You're actually starting to tell yourself the truth when you realize how absolutely vile fast food is not even just from a food standpoint and how disrespectful it is to the human race in general but like just the 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 total perspective of how shitty it is for our environment and our economy and every like how bad the jobs are for the people that actually occupy those buildings on a daily basis. Like it's in every single way. It is so disrespectful to humanity in general. Like it is just illness personified. It is everything that I despise. And then some, I don't even know how much I despise it yet because it's just, there's just new layers to it every day. It is the most disgusting shit that we could be doing to ourselves. The cost, the enormous cost of something that is so fucking vile. And it's just like a regular part of everyone's day. Not everyone. It's just a regular part of so many people's day. And it used to be a regular part of mine. So I'm so comfortable speaking on it. I wasn't grateful for anything. I was very, very much very depressed. And that was a crutch that I was using. That, and it was actively failing me. It was a crutch that was injuring me further and further and further. The longer I let it go on, the worse and worse it got. And the worse and worse I felt. And it cascaded into every other aspect. Physically, I was incapable. And it stole my confidence. Mentally, I was much more incapable. That shit slows you down and it clogs you up. And emotionally, I was a wreck because of the other two factors. It was disgusting. And then that emotional part of it just fed back into it because I wasn't in control of how I felt about it. So I was just upset for the sake of being upset. And it affected me so severely that it just circled right back around into the other two and then i would just eat even more and it would make me even further more physically injured and incapable and that hurt my confidence even more and then having that affect my mentality just it just compounds over and over and over and over and it's exponential but the best way to think about it what helped me the most is just like when you're hungry, you take that and you fucking reassociate it. You stare that hunger in the face. You feel it every second of it. And you, this, okay, I'm not, I'm not actually hungry. I don't need to eat right now. This is not correct because it's not your, your mind is just setting off triggers. When someone weighs hundreds and hundreds of pounds they do you don't need to eat you don't need to eat right now you every time you feel hungry it's your brain saying hey this is about the time that we always eat 
So let's uh let's keep on track there because your body thinks this is it what I need to do. I need to be good at this. This is what we do all the time. So now this is what I need to be good at. And it's keeping track of your eating schedule and consuming as much as possible because deep, deep down, your body doesn't know when it's going to eat next. So it has to take in as much as it can and hold on to as much of it as possible because historically, three meals a day consistently is not real. That's not real. Throughout history, that has never been a real option for 99.9999 repeating. Like, most people that have ever existed never got three meals a day, every fucking day. And that's insane. That amount of consumption is in fucking sane. And it's not necessary. But your mind doesn't know that. Your body doesn't know that. Your brain, rather, not your mind. It just needs to send instinctive triggers over and over and over. It's operating off of what has been going on for hundreds of thousands of years. Evolution has formed the way that our body responds to very specific things. And holding on to nutrients and fat and all of this stuff for dear fucking life is something that it has become very good at because it was very necessary for most people a long time ago. But the way that we fucking go through and waste food at the rate that we do these days is so unnatural and inhuman our bodies don't know how to process it properly and it starts with all the triggers that your brain is receiving from your intentions and the outside world and all of the information that your body is receiving it has to do something and it's going to get good at something what it gets good at is what you do with it over and over. It's what you practice. If you practice eating every day, it's going to get really good at eating. You need to reel that all the way back in and completely rethink about and reassociate your hunger. As soon as you get hungry, say, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't need to eat right now. That feeling that you get, that hunger that you feel, reassociate that with, okay, now when I don't give my body food that it doesn't need, it has to burn what is there. It has to use what you have in your stores at that point. It's called ketosis. I'm sure you've heard people talk about it before, but that's how you create a calorie deficit. You don't keep putting unnecessary calories in. It's not like, oh, you can eat like every, you know, whenever you can keep your eating schedule and then you just eat smaller and you just eat. No, that's how you make yourself fucking miserable. I don't count calories. I don't tell myself I can't eat anything. Luckily, I'm not allergic or have intolerances to a degree that would restrict my diet in that way. But I'm not worried about like, Oh, well, I uh, just, I don't know if that's good for me. I don't know if this is uh, Like, I'm not eating a bunch of random fucking trash. I don't eat fast food. I don't get shit from a bunch of other restaurants. <coughs> I'm not door dashing 24-7. And I eat once a day. I eat... Maybe twice if I'm really feeling it. If I went to the gym or something and I want a little extra afterwards. But basically, I eat one main meal and some stuff afterwards. Probably. But basically, I restrict my eating to a window of like four hours. And it's... It's never something that I'm just like... God, what time is it? Is it... Oh my god... Good time, yeah. I'm just sitting there. Oh my god. It's so fucking annoying. After like a week and a half, two weeks, your body isn't even going to send that signal anymore. I find out when it's like three, four o'clock because my body is like, 
hey, you know, by the way, you're probably getting hungry soon. And then I turn around and oh shit, it's like 3.30. Like I find out what time it is from when my body tells me, hey, you're probably going to start getting hungry soon. And even then at 3.30, I still might not even eat for another three hours. Because I know my brain wasn't going, oh my fucking god, ring the fucking alarm. We gotta get something in there, dude. We're gonna fucking, we gotta, we gotta eat. Oh, you're getting angry and you're getting fucking frustrated and you're not gonna be able to control your... Like, no, I decide. I decide when I'm gonna eat. I take that factor and I think, well, I still wanna do this, still wanna do that, still wanna do this. I could eat now and just get it out of the way or I could eat later. I could probably do this and that first and then I'll eat and then I'll be on time for something else, you know, or I'll eat while this is going on instead. And I'm not eating bad shit either. Like, it's not just whatever I want whenever I want. It can be, I don't restrict myself in that way, but I know that when I'm hungry and when I'm deciding to eat something, it's because it's something that I actually want to do, and I'm always eating something that I want to eat, and it's never, like, out of necessity. It's never to fix, like, my emotional state. It's never to remedy depression it's it's a conscious decision that i am actively making the best way that i can every day and that reanalysis of the way that i make just every single decision the way that one decision affects the other decision affects another decision affects another decision affects another decision it all adds up and it's this i've spoken on it if you've seen recent videos the way that you make all of your small decisions determines how you make your big decisions. So if it's all of this small stuff that you're making a bunch of fucking excuses for, and it's, ah, well, if I can't do that now, and I like, tell this and that, and I can't do that yet, and I don't want to do that because of this, and this is like, it's not an active mindset of getting stuff done and constantly being more prepared for the next thing that you're about to take on it's excuses and being afraid and not getting what needs to get done and having those big dominoes just cascade into all of this other excuse making and well now is not a good time and well if i well, yeah, and then i'll just do it later and i mean once again i used to do that shit all the fucking time just procrastinating and fucking ADHD, always putting shit off and always justifying decisions to not do it now. And well, if it's always this, then it's always, but obviously going about it that way is never going to actually be the most effective way to get everything done. You're just hiding and lying still, 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 still lying and hiding, hiding and lying. And it's all just being scared for fucking, for really no reason. There are a lot of reasons to uh, be scared that are very understandable, but there's no reason to be scared of all the small stuff. But like the fear of making all of those small decisions is, in my mind, a subconscious reaction to... Uh, you understanding that you haven't put yourself in a situation of preparedness and just not having any confidence in the the ability to go into something unprepared which is extremely hard obviously but some stuff you just there's no more waiting. There's no more being scared. In so many ways, once you jump in, you realize there was no reason to be scared in the first place. That just going for it is always just 
you're just so much better off not putting a bunch of shit off 